Hello and in today's video we're going to look at using RAD Pivot Field List with RAD Pivot Grid. In this video you will quickly learn how RAD Pivot Field List is an integral part of RAD Pivot Grid. It allows the end user to modify RAD Pivot Grid and generate many different reports with the current data with just a few clicks of the mouse. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2012 and look at the project that we were working on in our last example. So here we are once again inside of Visual Studio 2012 and this is the project that we were working on in our first episode of XAML Flex. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this application just where you can see where we left off and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to expand the screen just a little bit and you can see that we have our notebook, we have pen, and then we have pencil. Of course we have our average of price, our sum of quantity for January through December. And then of course we just have our grand totals here. So let's go ahead and begin adding in the RAD pivot field list and you'll see just how easy it is to add to this application. So when we were first setting things up, I went ahead and I added in two different types of column definitions. So we have this column definition, which you can see highlighted in blue. This is going to be for our RAD pivot grid. And then we have another one over here that you can look at and you can see that's where we're going to add in our RAD pivot grid, RAD pivot field list. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we can begin by going here and just typing in a simple pivot rad pivot filled list and we're going to give it a name of filled list. We're going to go ahead and give it a grid dot column of one and then we're going to give it a margin of four zero 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 and then of course we're just going to set up a data provider just like we did just a second ago with our rad pivot grid and from here I'm just going to set up that as a static resource and that's going to be local data provider and we'll go ahead and close out of the tag here so if you look inside of the designer you'll already see that it's been added to our design time window right now so that's about as easy as it gets. So let's go ahead now and let's go and run this application. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. We see our data presented as we are used to. So the only thing that has been added here, and I'm just going to span out the screen here just a little bit, is that we now have choose fields to add to report. So we have our name, we have our quantity, we have our price, and we have our date. And all of these, of course, were created inside of our class. But we can also drag fields between areas displayed below. So you can see we have a report filter that's set here. We also have a column labels that we have a date that we could maybe start sorting. So as you see here, I just changed the date from A to Z to Z to A. I'm going to switch it back to A to Z. And then, of course, values and then we have our row labels. So we have name, which also can be sorting on that. And of course there's other, other types of filters that we can add in from here. And there's also more sorting options that you can click at and you can see what would you like to sort by. Maybe the name, average or price, or the sum of quantity. So I'm going to hit cancel here. And then lastly we have the values, which is average or price and sum of quantity. And you can see you can perform some sort of maybe a count, if you would like to, the count of the price, an average of price, the sum of the price. You can do the same thing for quantity. You can add counts, average, and then you'll see here we also have more aggregate options that you can summarize the values by. I'm just going to close out of that. And then, of course, there is an index percentage of grand total and even more calculation options which you will be pleased to start playing with and letting your user filter the data for them. So I'm just going to click cancel here. 
So while I'm in here where it says choose fields to add to report, I could always remove the name if I wanted to. As you see now, the name has been removed. I can add it back if I wanted to. Same goes for quantity. I could remove that and get a customized details very quickly. And then price. And then the same thing goes for date. So what I want to actually do here is I'm going to take name and I'm going to drop it down here to the report filter. And as you see, we're now just filtering based off of name, which gives us 2012 and a sum of quantity and a sum of price. So I'm going to let you explore this on your own. You should be able to see the source code on XamilFlix. As always, please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. This is Michael Crump signing off. Thank you. Bye-bye.